it would be nice if all of the electrons lined up really nicely, the way they did in the last video, but they really don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn instead a method that will always work if you follow the rules. Okay, So we're going to start by practicing with the SO2 molecule. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to count valence electrons. Okay, So we're pretty good at this now, I think. But we're going to count valence electrons in the entire molecule. So remember valence electrons, right? Um, if you look at the periodic table, remember this group has one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so if you just learn that trick, it's pretty easy to remember. And we don't really have to worry about transition metals because we're talking about covalent compounds. And this is really nonmetals that we're mostly worrying about. So we find sulfur, okay? Sulfur has six, all right, so there's six. And we find oxygen, and oxygen has six, so two, there's two of them, so two times six. So this molecule has a total of 18 valence electrons. So that's the first thing that we need to do. The next thing we want to do is figure out who's going to be the central atom. Later in the chapter, I'll teach you kind of a foolproof method, but for now, we're just going to use a few kind of rules that will tend to give it away. For instance, it might be the atom that there's only one of, which makes it sound like it's probably sulfur. It might be the atom that's written first. Sounds like it might be sulfur. It might be the atom with the lower electronegativity. So do you remember electronegativity? Electronegativity increases this way, and it increases this way. So who's got the lower electronegativity, S or O? S. So all of our clues are pointing towards the fact that sulfur is probably our central atom. So that's going to be the basic framework for our structure. Um, and don't worry, if you can't figure out what the central atom is, I'm just going to tell you. Look at our structure, okay? And the first thing we do is we assume, and it may or may not be true, we assume that it's going to form single bonds. Okay, so step one is give everyone a single bond. The rules for this is written in your packet, by the way, so you could follow along with me if you want to, or you, you can use them later to remind yourself of the rules. The second thing is we have to give everybody eight electrons, right, because the octet rule. So remember, each of these lines is two, so this oxygen on the left already has two, so it needs six more. So now it has eight. The sulfur in the middle has two lines to it, so it already is sharing four electrons, so it needs four more. The oxygen on the right, just like on the left, already has two, so it needs six more. So pretend single bonds, give everybody an octet, and now you have to count the electrons that you've drawn. Okay, so I'm going to sort of go over them. I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay. Well, when we looked at valence electrons before, we only had 18. If these two numbers are the same, and oftentimes they will be, that means your structure was correct. But when they're different like this, then it means your structure isn't correct and that you needed a double or triple bond somewhere. So let's see what happens when, when we need to do that. So if you have two extra electrons like we did, right? We had 20 when we were only supposed to have 18. It means that we needed a double bond. If for some times we're going to have four extra, then you either need two double bonds or a triple bond. But we have two extra, so we need a double bond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a double bond in this molecule right here. Okay, I need one double bond, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on the left. I could have put it on the right, I just decided to pick up the left. And once again, now I have to make sure everybody has eight electrons. So the oxygen on the left has four, so it needs four more. It doesn't matter exactly where I put those two lone pairs, as long as I put them as pairs, okay? Two pairs somewhere. The sulfur already has six, so it needs two more. And the oxygen on the right has two shared with that line, so it needs six more. 
So notice we always put them in pairs, okay? This is the correct Lewis structure for SO2. You're all done. Okay, so let's do that with a couple more molecules for practice and see what happens. I'm going to throw an ion in here right away so you can see what you do with those. So first step, remember, count valence electrons. So if I look at the periodic table, phosphorus has five. And I have four times each oxygen has six. And because there's a three minus charge, I have to add three more electrons. If it were a positive charge, I would have subtracted them. So how many does that come out to be? Looks like 32 to me. Okay, again, I've got to pick the central atom. Okay, if we follow any of our rules, it looks pretty clear that phosphorus is the one in the middle. So I'm going to draw a bunch of single bonds to oxygens here. Okay, remember first thing is go ahead with single bonds. What's the second thing? Give everybody eight. So each of those O's has two, so I'm going to give each O six more. Okay. And the phosphorus has four lines to it, and each are two electrons, so it already has eight. So I don't need to give any more to that one. If I count those electrons, and I'd like you to do that right now, Okay, two, four, six, eight. Oh, look, I'm going to come up with 32 electrons. Please count the electrons in pairs and make sure you can come up with 32 electrons because sometimes it's trickier to count than it looks like. Remember, if these two numbers are the same, it means my structure is correct. So I don't have to do anything else. My structure is correct. The only thing I have to remember is my substance isn't really PO4. It's PO4, 3 minus. So I put it in brackets and I write the charge. So now you've drawn the covalent, uh, the Lewis structure for a polyatomic ion called phosphate. Okay, let's try one more and then we'll. So HCN, I'm just going to go ahead and t we've already drawn this the other way. I'm going to just going to tell you that that's the order they're they're in H and then C and then N. Okay, so let's see, one plus four plus 5 is 10 valence electrons. So my next step is to give everybody 8, except remember, hydrogen gets 2, because it's trying to be like helium. So I'm going to leave it alone. It never has lone pairs. Okay, never put lone pairs on hydrogen. So carbon needs 4 more, and nitrogen needs 6 more. Okay, and then if I count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Remember the rule if I have four extra? Okay, I either need two double bonds or I need a triple bond. Well, can I put a double bond there? Are you allowed to have a double bond to hydrogen? You can't. Okay, if I had a double bond to hydrogen, hydrogen would have four electrons, right? And it can only have two. So I can't have two double bonds, but I can have a triple bond. So again, I rewrite that. Okay, don't try to fix your original structure. Start over. And I put in my triple bond. And the only thing I have left to do is make sure everybody has a full octet. Except hydrogen. It has two. Carbon has four lines, so that's eight. And nitrogen needs two more. So that's your Lewis structure for HCN. Okay, now you're going to do lots and lots of practice with that, and you'll get really good at it.